Hey everyone, in the video today, we're gonna to go chasing the Aurora in New Zealand, and I'm gonna give you some tips for capturing the night skies. If you like, you can download some of the raw files via the link below. All right, let's go. So how do we know if we're gonna be able to see the Aurora? Well, thankfully, some people much smarter than me have put together some incredible forecasting apps and tools that we can reference for our Aurora chasing. So essentially the strength of the aurora is measured in a KP index. The higher this number with the KP, the more potential energy is there to enter the Earth's atmosphere. So in the Northern Hemisphere, particularly if you're up in high latitudes like Iceland or Greenland, a low KP will still give you a really good aurora display. Down here in New Zealand, we're quite far away from the South Pole still, so we need a really high KP number to be able to potentially see the aurora. So what numbers are we talking about? Well, in the South Island, anywhere from a KP4 and above will generally provide opportunities to see the aurora. The other important factor though, is something called the BZ. Now this BZ number, all you really need to know is we want the BZ number to be in the negative. And once that floats down into the negative, that energy is able to enter the Earth's atmosphere and the aurora will be visible to the naked eye. So sometimes you might have a KP six or seven forecast, which is incredibly higher, but then you don't see the aurora. And then other times you might have a two or three and it's amazing. It's all because of that BZ. So for tonight, it's looking like everything is lining up for us. We've got a high KP index. The BZ is already right down into the negatives and it's clear skies out there. So we're pretty close to location. We're just waiting for it to get dark though. So I'm gonna talk about the settings. What do we need to do when we're capturing the night sky? And this is kind of the same for whether you're capturing the Milky Way, Northern Lights, Southern Lights, etc. It's all the same principle. So let's break it down now. First thing we need, obviously, it's a long exposure. So I've had to dig out the old tripod. We're gonna be shooting exposures anywhere from 10, 20, 30 seconds long. So when it comes to the shutter speed, one thing to consider is that if you're exposing for too long, say 30 seconds, you could start to get stars trailing in your shot. That's gonna be determined by your focal length. So the wider you are, the longer you're gonna be able to be on that shutter speed. The other factor is when it's Northern Lights or Southern Lights, if we're exposing for too long, we start to lose the movement in the beams and it all starts to smudge. So it's worth experimenting with your shutter speed. I've found personally with the Aurora, I like to sit around the 10 to 15 second mark, anything longer than that, we lose the detail in the beams. That's good for the sky. However, the foreground and everything, it's gonna be so dark. So what I like to do, if I can't get there in the blue hour, if you're getting there in the night, then it's good to lower the ISO down to say 500, for example, and do a three or four minute exposure because you don't worry about star trails down there. That way you're gonna pull out way more detail and keep the noise low. For the sky exposures, the ISO will have to be quite high, anywhere from 2000, 3200 ISO. Lastly, the f-stop. Opening up the aperture is essential to let the light in. So I'm sitting on f2.8, you might have an f4 lens, you really wanna open that f-stop up. The downside obviously is that's going to affect our depth of field. So when it comes to your composition, you might wanna keep a nice simple composition with minimal foreground. If you wanna incorporate foreground, which I typically would do, then you might need to focus stack. So if you're gonna keep it short and sweet, high ISO, low f-stop, and a long exposure. When it comes to focusing, you want to use manual focus and the key is to focus on something far off in the distance. This way you're going to hit what's called the infinity point on the lens where basically everything say 10 feet in front of you and beyond will be in focus. So what I like to do is I'm in manual focus, I adjust my focus ring or on your camera you might push the magnifying glass and you're gonna move that around to something that you might be able to spot in the distance. This would typically be a star or even the moon and simply adjust your focus ring until you see the details come nice and clear, nice and sharp. So if it's a star, it's gonna be real big and blurry. Keep adjusting until it becomes a little pinprick and that's how you get it. So we finished an aerial shoot yesterday afternoon and then we pretty much hit the ground running. It was already starting to get dark and I had a location in mind. This location is a place that I've actually tried to capture the Aurora a few times, but the conditions just didn't really line up, especially with the cloud. So in our case, the skies were crystal clear. Everything was looking very promising. So just starting to look at compositions now, we're pretty much on dark. The Aurora is starting to come up in screen already, which is impressive considering there's still a bit of a lingering glow from the sunset as well. 
Uh, at the moment, I'm looking at these two trees which are framing up the mountain in the background. What I'm always looking for though in my night images is some kind of water, body of water, whether it's a lake for a reflection, the cascades, um, just to give us a bit more luminosity so we're not having such a dark lower portion of the frame. So we've got the lake here. I'm hoping we do pick up a bit of the glow in the lake. We'll see what we can do. But yeah, it's already out there, so this is uh, pretty epic. Should be a good night. Wow, look at that. That is, I can still see the glow from sunset, but we're picking up that green beam up there. So you can only imagine, give it another 20 minutes or so when we're in the proper darkness. That's gonna look ridiculous to the naked eye even. So one of the challenges with my three minute exposures, I've got the ISO at 800, uh, which is great to keep that noise down. But every now and then a, w a breeze comes through and those trees are obviously blurring. So it's a bit of a challenge in that regard, but I think I might have one here that's sharp enough. And then after that, I've done the faster exposures, which are great for the sky and picking up a bit more of the details in the aurora and the stars. So this exposure here was a three minute exposure at a lower ISO, I've gone down to ISO 1000. I actually went to F7 just to make sure that I was sharp on my trees in the front, as well as the mountains in the back. And now I'll do a faster exposure because all those stars are trailing. So we do our faster exposure now and then the two will be blended together. And that way we've got less noise all in the shadows here and we've got a little bit better clarity with our depth of field. Wow, to the naked eye, it's just a huge big glow behind the mountains, backlighting all the peaks. It's coming out really nice in camera, but yeah, even with the naked eye, it looks incredible. It's quite interesting though, because normally with the southern lights, it's more of a pink, pinky glow with I've often seen vertical pillars like beams shoot up. Tonight is completely different. This is reminding me a little bit more of the northern lights on a weaker night um, where it's just a green, big green glow back there. It's um, absolutely beautiful. So few frames were captured on that original composition. And I just thought, you know what, I really need to maximise some foreground here and the lake and just get a, a better view of the sky. So I decided to get past those trees, head down to the water's edge. And as always, you would have heard me mention this in other videos, but I'm always trying to incorporate something near to me, something close that really is going to give a sense of depth and scale. So I utilised the rocks, kind of set up and started shooting some frames. So after shooting for maybe 20 minutes or so, I started to think that, okay, you know, this was beautiful, stoked, maybe it's time to pack up and consider trying a new location. And then suddenly, bang, I just couldn't believe what happened. The sky just absolutely erupted. We were pretty much speechless. Well, I, w I began as speechless and then I just started screaming all sorts of stuff. The display was so vibrant, particularly the glow intensified, but the most spectacular part was watching the pillars. And that's something you don't really get with the Northern Lights. In the Southern Lights, we get these pillars, these vertical shoots of light that just start moving up. And the height of these things, they were just going up and over. I started shooting a few frames at 12 millimeters and the beams were still going up and out of the lens. It was just, I'm absolutely lost for words. I'm even getting goosebumps recounting it. It's easily the strongest Aurora display that I've personally seen. And from all reports, I think it's one of the strongest that we've ever had here in recent history. It's absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> that is all time. Oh, unbelievable. So after the display faded and you know the, the adrenaline started to come down after at least a solid hour at this location, Kind of got to the point where, you know, from a photographic perspective, I definitely felt like we'd captured, you know, the best possible images we could. Anything beyond that would just be being absolutely greedy. And then I thought, well, why not get greedy? Why don't we go to an entirely different location? Because this thing doesn't look like it's going anywhere. It might have dulled down, but there's a good chance if that BZ number drops, it could be on again. So there's another location I had in mind. The thing with this one though, is a good solid hours drive away. And I have photographed the Aurora here before, but there's definitely a few different compositional options. The beautiful thing about this place is not only do we have the water, a lake, but often this lake can be reflective. We have mountains, lakes, and then trees as well to add all these different elements to the image. So basically had a bite to eat, 
put a bit of fuel in the car and then we decided to hit the road. Why not? Let's go for it. Let's see if we can bag another image during this spectacular night of the Aurora. So many reds in there compared to earlier on in the night. Got lots of green but now the beams are really showing that pink and the green is something that we just don't normally get here so much so it's been incredible to see. Well it's a gift that keeps on giving. We are committed to an hour's drive to come to another location here and um, it's definitely paid off. We uh, settled in and just got another beautiful display of beams and reflections in the lake. So we kind of knuckled down here and had a solid half hour of shooting and doing the same thing that I did earlier, making sure that I've actually this time focused act, done my bulb exposures for all these shadow zones in the foreground and then just captured those beautiful beams as they I uh, just poked up above the mountains there and it's still going now. So <laughs> it's currently two o'clock in the morning. I can't remember the last time I stayed up this late, but um, a night like this definitely warrants it. So it's been one, one to remember, definitely. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video and picked up a few tips. That was certainly a night I won't be forgetting anytime soon. Remember to keep in mind, find a solid location, really think about your composition, consider using bulb mode and doing a longer exposure with a lower ISO for all your foreground and midground, and then those faster exposures with the higher ISO for your skies. Blend it all together in post and you'll get a much sharper image. But look, at the end of the day, just getting out there and capturing the night sky, whether it's the Milky Way, or the Northern or Southern Lights. It's truly a humbling thing and I recommend you try and get out and do it whenever you can. All right guys, thanks for viewing. I'll see you in the next video.